Hey guys, I'm just here with a quick little check-in. I just want to update you guys on how Spookathon is going for me, and the books that I haven't finished yet are going to be my TBR for the Dewey's 24-hour readathon. So let's get into the books. So I have finished one book in Spookathon, which is Stolen, and I will review it at the end of the month. The books that I want to read for Dewey's 24-hour readathon are the remaining books for Spookathon that I am working my way through or haven't yet gotten to. So let's get into my TBR. So the first book in the TBR is Drawing Blood by Poppy Z. Bright. I am about 50% of the way through this book, which means I have about 200 pages left in the book. And so far I am loving it. It is so creepy. I think I'm dragging my feet so much with that one because I don't want it to end. Like I love it so far. I think it's going to be a four and a half or a five depending on what happens at the end. Like. I can only imagine how crazy stuff is going to get after because stuff is crazy and I'm only 50% of the way so I, I can't even fathom how crazy it's going to be at the end. So then the next book on the list that I'm in is um, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera and I am only 68 pages of the way in so I have another 300 pages of they both die at the end. So far I'm really loving it, really looking forward to it. I just love his writing style and I know that I'm gonna really like this book. And then on my TBR is also The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. I haven't started it yet, shame on me. Um, and that is about 145 pages. And actually I had an utter fail because when I went to get In the Miso Soup on my Kindle, it's not translated into English that is available on the American Kindle. So you can buy the translated Kindle version from Japanese Kindle, but mine is registered in America, so they don't sync, like, together. So I can't actually read in the miso soup, even though I really, really want to. So I'm going to have to trade that out. It's actually kind of serendipitous because Katie at Books and Things is having a Victorian-inspired reading month, and she's asked some different booktubers to recommend Victorian set works that they really enjoy. I remembered a really great little novella by Oscar Wilde ca called The Canterville Ghost. So it fits perfectly with the spooky setting and it fulfills the Victorian recommendation for Katie at Books and Things. Just one more thing I want to mention about Dewey's 24 hour readathon. So whenever I have to read a lot, I use this type of system. So each one of these is one of the four books that I want to read. And then each one of the tick is like the amount of pages left divided by 10. Just a visual reminder of like how far I've done and like, ooh, what would get me to the next tick mark really gets me motivated and my dog is crawling around in here. Jack, come here. You wanna say hi? Come here, good boy. Oh, good boy. This is Jack. Little impromptu visit. Say hello. Mm -hmm. Say hello. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, I have my handy dandy chart of the four books that I'm going to try to read. There's a total of 779 pages. So I am planning to vlog Dewey's 24 hour readathon, so I will give you little updates throughout the day. I'm just really excited, and good luck to everyone else who's going to start this. I can't wait to see what everyone is doing, and best of luck! So, happy reading! Bye! Hey guys, good morning! It is six, about six o'clock in the morning right now. Um, my alarm went off to get up at midnight and I decided not to get up because I have to go to work today for a bit, which involves me driving a car. So I didn't think that pulling like an all-nighter would be that good of an idea. Um, so I'm gonna start right now at six and I have to go to work, I think, at nine. So I have a few hours to read and then I'm gonna have to get ready for work and go and then come back. So yeah, um, I'm gonna start right now and I have 779 pages to get to. But the good news is that I'm wearing my comfiest reading outfit. So my favorite hoodie and my favorite <laughs> pants, these are fleece lined. And I've got some tea, <laughs> yeah. And the reason my voice sounds weird is because I just woke up and my face is orange because <laughs> we rock it real old school here and we have like a space heater but yeah so I'm gonna start now and wish me luck bye <laughs> so cute. hey guys it's currently about 8 30 
and I just got ready. I have to go into work for music day. So I managed to read about 124 pages of They Both Die at the End, so I'm about, I'm about halfway, I would say. I am dying of heat right now. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt and then a cashmere sweater, and then I'm gonna wear a coat on top of it because at music day, they don't heat the auditorium, so it is really, really cold. So the only other thing to say is that I am going to sit with the parents and I'm going to kind of snuggle in between um, moms and dads so that the teachers don't see me because they will want me to sit over with the teachers. And if I sit with the teachers, I have to sit with my back straight and I have to pay full attention. Um, whereas if I sit between the parents, I'm hoping to be able to read my Kindle in my lap while I'm listening to Music Day. You know what I'm saying? Wish me luck. See you! update so the school festival just ended and it was super cute and there were some songs that I could really get into they had stuff from Pirates of the Caribbean they had Copa Cabana and they had tequila like you know the one where it's like tequila and I was like I don't think they know what they're saying but yeah overall it was super cute and I could read on my Kindle but what I didn't anticipate was that everyone would notice me so it's not that hard. In a sea of Japanese people, I'm the only foreigner in the whole auditorium. So when different people would like sit around me and then they would see me, then they would want to talk to me, obviously, like about their kids and about, I don't know, one lady was saying how her daughter, Manami, always is singing English at home. And it made me really happy. And I was so like, my heart was going like doki doki like, oh, that makes me feel so good as a teacher. Um, yeah, so I actually, I think I read only 55% of The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. I didn't read Drawing Blood because I want to read that like undisturbed. So um, The Halloween Tree is like kind of a kid's tale. So I think it was perfect for that. And now I'm just headed home to grab um, my fiance and we're gonna head to a Starbucks to get some reading on. Uh, Cause I like to kind of switch up my locations and also I don't feel like cooking lunch so I just feel like having maybe a cinnamon roll. So yeah, um, off to a good start today. So, awesome. <laughs> got back from Starbucks um, I decided that I needed to come home because I'm in the last about 30 pages of they both die at the end and I just know that it's gonna break my heart and I'm probably gonna cry so I didn't want to do that in the mall in front of a bunch of strangers so yeah we came home and I'm gonna change into more comfortable things and then I'm going to finish they both die at the end oh my god oh my god I'm so nervous about it I think it's gonna be really, really sad, but good, but so sad. Oh my god! Well, I finished They Both Die at the End, and it was so sad. I totally cried mad hard, and you can probably tell my face is like so red, but good job! Oh my god, five out of five, and oh my god, it just broke my heart into a million little pieces. So I'm gonna shower and try to recoup uh, some of my energy 
but oh my god I just can't get over this book like I should have known like the title is they both die at the end oh my god so yeah I'm gonna take a shower and I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna read the other stuff <laughs> so yeah if anyone else is reading this book and is also like emotionally damaged, fragile, heartbroken, um, yeah, definitely write down in the comments below. I feel your pain. I mean, it's a good pain. This book is so good, but <laughs> painful. Painful. Okay. Bye. Hey guys. Um, it's about 7 o'clock p.m. now and I'm just stopping for a coffee break and I just wanted to give you guys an update. So my last update was that I finished They Both Die at the End, and then after that I decided to read the other book that has just been like really on my mind, which is Drawing Blood by Poppy Z. Bright, and this book I have been savoring. It's a book that I don't want to rush through, so I've been drawing it out over the week, and essentially it is the story of a hacker boy from New Orleans and a boy whose father murdered the rest of his family in childhood who is going back to his home town to um, try to find out why his father did that and he is a artist so their paths somehow collide and things got so freaky so good so good but so freaky so the thing about Poppy Z. Bright is the writing style is very gothic and very sinister and it just creeps in on you and it's very erotic as well so it's just things get all like mixed and very confusing and I just I'm at 80% right now and it's at a point where I'm just like I don't know what is gonna happen and I'm like scared to read the last 20% because her other book I read, like the last 20% just gave me nightmares for like weeks. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm like really nervous to read the last 20%, but I'm also like loving how excited I am about reading it. Um, it's an amazing book. And actually this book is a book that is the perfect book for Spookathon. It has an orange cover. It is a super spooky setting. It is a really creepy title. It's a thriller for sure and also it's a childhood fear drawing blood so like it's all five so technically if I wanted to be lazy I could say it's all five because actually there's like a haunted house and there's gravestones and graveyards involved and there's like the swamp culture of Louisiana and there is the voodoo culture of New Orleans it's like all of the best witchery and Halloween goodness without it being Halloween. And I just think Poppy Z. Bright is a brilliant, brilliant writer. So yeah, but anyway, I had to take a break because it was really scary and I don't know what's gonna happen and I'm so nervous and like kind of freaked out, but also it's a good thing. Um, so anyway, I went back to the Halloween tree and I just wanted to show you guys how cute the illustrations are. So there's some illustrations in this book and for instance, it looks like that. It's a very like scrawny, slender type of illustration style and I really dig it. It's different than most of the illustrations that I read um, and I do love that kind of illustration style. It's just kind of not so popular among the stuff that I read. Um, so I'm probably going to finish up the Halloween tree and I will give you guys an update on that and then I'm going to do drawing blood and yeah, it's gonna be creepy and amazing and oh my god. For me, my 24 hour readathon is finishing up the books for Spookathon, so of course my reads are like scary and creepy and 10 out of 10 would recommend They Both Die at the End and also Drawing Blood. Like, oh my gosh, Drawing Blood isn't even finished yet and I'm just like, you're brilliant and I'm so creeped out and it's amazing. Hey guys, just checking in. It's about 8.40 and I finished The Halloween Tree then, after I finished the Halloween tree, I got into drawing blood and oh my god, like what is that? What? 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 How? Oh my god, like so many scary, freaky, just like elements and Poppy Z. Bright just ties it together so well and oh my god, like I just finished and I'm like, oh my god. Like you know when you read a book and you can't tell how the end is going to go and you're like, are my characters 
going to live? Are they going to die? Is the ship going to sink and like everyone will die to the bottom of the ocean? Or will they sail away and be happy? What is going to happen? And like up until the last 5%, 6%, no, that's a lie. Up until the last 98%, I had no idea. Like it just reminds me of I think it, what, Gwen Stefani, like, that shit is bananas. Like, absolutely bonkers. And wow. Oh my god, if you're looking for any sort of Halloween scary book, like, please read Drawing Blood by Poppy Z. Bright. It is, it will definitely freak you out. Like, oh, oh my god. Like, I think it's gonna be on every Halloween recommend video, like, that I ever make because, wow. Um,. I know that Poppy Z. Bright isn't that well known, and I just don't know why. I think it's because the books are so graphic and so dark. Absolutely, children should not read this book. No children should be anywhere near this book. So much dark content. But if you can stomach dark content, then I would really recommend it. Yeah, so anyway, this is what my little chore chart paper looks like. Oh, you can't really see because the light's behind, but anyway. I finished the three books, and then this one over here is The Canterville Ghost, which is just a measly little 126 pages. So I'm gonna take a late dinner break, and then I'm going to come back and read that. Hey guys, yeah, so I'm just checking in real fast. I'm gonna catch up on some YouTube videos while I eat dinner. So for dinner, I'm having coffee. It's like my second coffee of the day, and I've had four teas. I'm like really caffeinated. And then some... Um, just cut up raw capsicum and then zatarans, uh, black beans and rice made with like vegan butter and then these are like really yummy fake chicken strips. Well I made them strips but they're like a patty. Um, anyway, yeah, so I can't wait to um, carb up and eat and then get back to the reading. So yeah, see you! Bye! Hey guys, so it's about 10.30 and I just finished up The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde and as always, he is just hilarious. Out of all the books I've read today, I didn't laugh out loud for any of them and this one got me just laughing out loud and I had to like share it with uh, my fiance because it was just so, so funny. Um, if you don't know, it's about a family, an American family who moves into a... British haunted house and things don't go as expected for the ghost. So I have finished all of the books that are for the Spookathon, so I'm really excited about that. So my total right now is about 780 pages today and I am going to keep reading. I am buddy reading um, Big Little Lies with my aunt and I'm about halfway through that, so I'm gonna just read that until midnight and see how many pages I can squeeze in the end. So yeah, I'm really happy about how today has gone, and I hope you guys are also um, getting your reading done. And yeah, I look forward to hearing about everyone's reading. <laughs> Alright, I'll check in with you later. Bye! Hey guys, so it just hit midnight, and I'm gonna do my final check-in. So. After finishing the four books left for Spookathon, I read 25% of Big Little Lies. So I think that's about 117 pages, which brings my total for the day up to about 900 pages read for the day. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the last thing I want to say is that <laughs> When I was looking online to see how other people were doing, I totally realized that I'm a complete dill and that the time for Tokyo was supposed to start at 9 p.m. tonight and that I'm supposed to finish at 9 p.m. on Sunday. So it's my first 24-hour readathon, so I didn't realize that or I forgot that. I'm not sure which one, but I don't have it in me to do another 24 hours. I'm really tired, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna hope that you guys will be understanding. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and upload this about the same time that I would have been finishing if I was reading on Tokyo time, so I won't be any earlier than anyone else. But yeah, overall, this was a really great experience trying to read for 24 hours. I wish I had had the gumption to get up at midnight and read midnight to midnight, but I just, I had to work today, so I needed to drive a car, which, you know, you need some sort of 
energy and like cognition for that, especially in pouring rain. And um, yeah, so overall I'm really, really pleased. About 900 pages and about 4.25 books. So not so bad. And I will be reviewing all of the books that I read um, in my wrap up part two at the end of the month. So please look out for that. Yeah, so without further ado, thanks so much for watching this vlog. And I'm sorry that I got the times mixed up, but next year I will definitely do better. And I hope everyone is having a really good 24 hour read. So no matter where you are, I hope you're getting all of your reading done. And without further ado, I'm gonna say goodnight because it's midnight and I'm so sleepy. <laughs> okay, see you, bye!